Hello, everyone, and welcome to PAEA's April webinar, Putting the Hexagon Project into Your Practice. Registered participants will receive a Google Form link via email after the event to fill out for their one hour of Act 48 credit. This webinar will be recorded and available at a later date on the PAEA website. Before we begin the webinar, we are asking participants to mute your microphones during the presentation, but you may keep your video on. Those controls are located in the bottom left corner of the controls bar. We are leaving it up to you to decide on your level of privacy as the recording will be housed on the PAEA website. We are also asking everyone to sign in on the chat roll. Please use the same name in which you registered for this event. Feel free to add questions for the presenters in the chat along the way. Questions in the chat will be addressed at the end of the presentation, or you may save them for the live Q&A period after the presentation. Let's get this webinar rolling. Ryan, take it away. Hello, uh, thank you for being here for Region 9's uh, webinar uh, regarding the Hexagon project. And uh, we're going to be sharing our screen uh, with a presentation. And we're going to kick this presentation off with the wonderful Beth Burkhauser, who has created the Hexagon project as a ongoing uh, uh, project that's been growing and it's been thriving. And we want to bring it to the classroom in this presentation to see other ways other teachers are uh, implementing it and how easy it is to bring into your curriculum. I'm gonna share my screen at this time. As soon as I share my screen, I'm gonna to introduce to you, or actually before I share my screen, I'm gonna to introduce to you now, uh, Beth Burkhauser. And when uh, Beth is ready, you just let me know, I'll share my screen, Beth. Here you go, Beth. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Jill. Uh, the Interdependence Hexagon Project is honored, happy, excited to be part of the PAEA webinar series and share with you how we are and how five of our Pennsylvania art teachers, K through 12, have been incorporating the Hexagon Project into their curriculum, some for the very first time and some have been with us for 10 years or more. So I'm Beth Burkhauser, founder and director of the Interdependence Hexagon Project since I retired from public school teaching and college teaching. Uh, for those of you who don't know that much about the project, let's take a brief trip through the Hexagon Project history. And you can share the screen now, Ryan. And I don't hear him. You're muted, Ryan. Oh, my bad. Uh, I also want to remind everybody to make sure you uh, put your information, your name, what school you're at, and your name uh, in the chat. And here we go, Beth. And going to slideshow. There we go. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, the project uh, grew out of Interdependence Day and the interdependence movement, which was initiated in 2003. It was declared as a reaction to events surrounding 9-11, the terrorism, war, threats to democracy, very much like we have today. And it is a time to seek renewal and seek, see ourselves as interconnected in an increasingly interconnected world, a time to reflect on our rights and our responsibilities as not only citizens of our nation, but also across borders as citizens of the world with common concerns. How can we constructively build a just global, global civil society? Okay, Ryan, you can forward it. And forward it again. The founders, are Dr. Benjamin Barber, New York City, and Mrs. Sandra Myers, a civic and cultural leader, and my neighbor here in Scranton. In 2006, Sandra asked me to become involved, and as a result, I developed the Interdependence Hexagon Art Project for students and communities worldwide, a social justice arts project. So, what is the Hexagon Project? Simply, students and communities create in any medium using a downloadable hexagon 
template metaphor for our interconnectedness. They respond to relevant theme and do research. Students work collaboratively or alone on one or multiple hexagons. The deadline for participation is June 30th. Interdependence month is of course in September. Uploading is ongoing on artsonia.com. We encourage exhibits virtually in your own school and regionally. We have an Eastern regional exhibit every year and others. Okay. Uh, many teachers use this handout on the right containing the basic themes of interdependence for student choice. Since 2006, over 12,000 hexagons have been made by students and communities from over 15 countries and five continents. You can forward. Each year, we highlight a special theme. The 2022 theme is kindness. These wonderful links that you see here are, will be in today's chat and also on our website, which houses resource is a, is a resource base for each of our special themes with lesson and unit plans, visuals, worksheets, and handouts for teachers. Okay, um, anyone, anywhere, that's the next slide. Uh, each year can be inspired by the Pennsylvania Kindness Poem Project. This is it, sponsored by the Pennsylvania Humanities Council. A crowdsourced poem created by Pennsylvania Poet Laureate Trepetta B. Mason called Kindness Lives Here is a perfect motivation, I feel, for creating visual images, all found in the kindness theme section of our website. A variation of this PowerPoint with this poem is also in our resources. There's a very nice YouTube video performed by Pennsylvania celebrities. Also find several teacher created lesson plans from PAEA members uh, using this poem for motivation. And a great cross-cultural, uh, cross-curricular rather connection. And did you know your students can make a one minute video for Artsonia? This one on the right is from Nigeria from the 2021 project. This is our template, downloadable and ready to use or transfer onto any sturdy support. This is our regional entry form on the right. This form must be attached to the hexagon back for all regional entries that are sent to me in Scranton. And it has a space for an artist statement helpful when uploading to Artsonia. The project is juried and special recognition awards are given to students' works which demonstrate most outstanding and creative interpretations of the theme or themes of interdependence. Our website with all resources under participate. Give us your contact information by clicking on sign up. But remember, our digital gallery is on artsonia.com and Danielle will guide you through her Artsonia tutorial at the end of our presentations. A quick view of Artsonia 2021 with entries from all over the world, which addresses our most important goal with interdependence. And that is to see all students and participants ideas as interconnected in one digital gallery space from school to school community to community, from year to year. Here's the 2022, still to be completed by June 30th. And thank you.
And now I'm going to turn the program over to our teachers, starting with Nicole Delavan. Nicole? Thank you, Beth. Um, I did the Hexagon Project for the first time in spring 2018 when I was a long-term K-8 charter school substitute um, in the art room. And then I taught kindergarten special ed for three years, so I took a break from the Hexagon Project, but now I'm in a K-5 art classroom in the same district, Wampalpec South Elementary. So what I did was split up some of the videos and stories you see below to do one video or one story at a time, which I'll talk about in the next slide. Uh, the YouTube videos were Kindness Boomerang. The next one was 10 Random Act of Kindness for Kids and Kids Explain Kindness. The two stories I read to grades K to two were Kindness is My Superpower and What Does It Mean to Be Kind? I have the physical copies in my classroom. Um, and Danielle Fitzmorris, who we'll see a video of later, uh, she read The Caring Me I Want to Be and A Little Spot of Kindness. She had the physical copies in her classroom as well. But I will put links in the chat for read alouds that are on YouTube, as well as the YouTube videos. So the activities that I did first, like I said earlier, I had taken the videos and the stories and I split them up amongst a few weeks. That way they weren't, you know, everything all in one for the students. So I did one story and then we would discuss it then finish up another project that we were working on. So I was able to spread out another project for longer weeks, but also sneak in kindness little by little and get more conversations going. So kids would already have an idea of what kindness is about or kind of have it um, as a theme in their head and wouldn't, it wouldn't be you know super fresh. That way they would be ready to go when they did introduce the Hexagon Project. So I so like, just move my little thing right here. I apologize. Um, so what we did talk about after the stories of the videos is what act of kindness that they saw and then how the acts of kindness might have impacted the people that were involved, whether it be somebody doing the act of kindness or somebody on the receiving end of it. We also talked about chains of events, depending on the story or depending on the video. For example, um, one act of kindness led to another in some of the videos. And for the first day of the project, we did watch the Kindness Boomerang video, which I felt like had the most impact out of all the videos that I was previewing before I decided what to pick for the first day of the Hexagon Project lesson. Um, after that, I had the students make a mind map about acts of kindness that they've done, acts of kindness that they may want to do, and acts of kindness that they've already had done to them, the way they could think of some ideas for their hexagon project. After this, we discussed this on the board and made a list of the different acts of kindness and discussed our experiences, discussed how it made us feel, how it made others feel, and then I had them make a rough draft of their hexagon project. Now, some of my students are still working on the rough drafts and most are working on their final. I gave them options of doing any media that they wanted in the classroom, as long as they, you know, asked about it, of course, and didn't just, you know, went and grabbed anything. I want to help them kind of think of how to work through it with different media. But most of them chose pencil, colored pencil and marker. And top here, oh, sorry, that's okay. So at the end, I'll just do an age appropriate art critique, but I will use anonymous artwork. I've been doing that this year and it's helped the kiddos with, um, I guess, being not afraid to say what they want to say about an artwork. And we always talk as positively as we can. And I've taught them to phrase things, you know, positively, whether it's constructive feedback that they might want to give the anonymous artist or positive things, you know, like compliments about what they did well. And we talk about, you know, specifically what they did well. And I have them elaborate more on those kind of things. So at the end, I will have them do an art critique, but with anonymous work for now. Maybe next school year, I might have them do it with their own classmates' artwork. But this year, it's been working out with anonymous work. And I'm ready for the next slide. The first is a link to our free hexagon project lesson plans by all the teachers that are here, and that spans from grades K to 12. The next one's a link for the lesson plan that Danielle Fitzmorris and I did, and that's for K to 5th. There's a lot of resources. You can kind of cater the lesson to your own students and your own grade level. There's resources for special needs for lower elementary and for upper elementary, both um, videos, digital um, activities, and also stories for different age levels. That's my email and then Danielle Fitzmorris's email, but I will put these in the chat too. So everybody has it. The artwork on your left is from one of my fourth grade students. She was giving flowers to another student to make them smile in her drawing. On the right is one of my fifth graders drawing. Uh, one day, a couple months ago, I had a really hoarse voice and the kids were asking me why I couldn't walk out to get a cup of water. I said, well, you know, I can't leave you guys alone. But um, she decided that she was going to go out and get me a cup of water. So she'd asked to go to the bathroom. I didn't think anything of it, but she came back with two cups of water in her hand and it, it made my heart burst with joy. But um, so she wanted to draw about that, which is awesome. That's great. 
Then on the left here is a kindergartner's artwork. She wanted to draw about her and her mom uh, taking a walk and then it makes her mom smile. And on the right is a third grader's artwork. Um, they're doing lockers as of halfway through the school year. And I guess she said one of the girls had trouble, you know, opening the knob and had trouble trying to get all of her stuff out of her locker. So she said she had helped her out one day and made her smile. So the girl on the right, you know, has a little tear. So she dropped her books and the girl on the left is her helping her with the books. And those are some examples from this year. Now I'll introduce our wonderful Melissa Cruz. She teaches at Howard Gardner Multiple Intelligence Charter School and she teaches K through eighth. Thank you, Nicole. So my journey with the Hexagon Project, um, I did not know when I was at Keystone just how much Beth was going to influence my life, but I'm glad that our paths crossed and it led me to be where I am today. Over the years, um, like I said, I have worked with the Hexagon Project in many capacities. Um, many of those were with the community. Um, and in this picture, you can see that um, we were rec recruiting community members to come and work on a mural um, that was on a rain barrel for the Lackawanna River Conservation Association. Ryan. <laughs> oh. So um, once again, uh, this was another day that we were working with the community and it was a very rainy day. So lots of the um, people that were in the community and out at the festival gathered underneath our tent and were thrilled to be staying dry and making hexagons with us. I have also spoken at, I did mean NAEA and uh, USSEA conferences about making hexagon boxes and hexagon books. And we also included um, the math behind the hexagon. So teaching teachers isn't something that I do every day, but it was a lot of fun and it feels really great to be able to bring this to many other um, schools and students out there in the world. So here I am working um, at a pop-up creative studio uh, showcasing the Scranton Times coloring contest and the regional art show in Scranton. So this was right after um, COVID. So obviously, you know, we didn't have too much going on with the community, but this was our first um, chance to get back out there and, and bring people back into the project. And it was a really great day. We worked with um, Camp Kistler and the EPCAMR pigments. Um, and this project was actually all about mine reclamation. And um, this lesson plan is also on the website. Um, if you were interested in getting some of those pigments and um, using a lesson plan that involves the environment. So not only through using Hexagon Project have um, I made connections with teachers, um, but I also make connections within the community as well. Here is Bobby Hughes from EPC AMR. And um, this, like I said, this project was all about using um, mine reclamation pigments and it involved steam um, and the science and uh, I did mention already that that, web, uh, that lesson plan is available on the website if you were interested. Next. So we've also um, set up uh, casting at Lackawanna River Fest and these um, hexagons were actually made using river water. And so there's all kinds of ways that you can utilize the hexagon project um, either with your students or with your community. 
So here are some of the ways that my kiddos participated. Um, this is Juliana who made it into the regional show and was very proud to come and show her parents and family um, that she had art on display. Um, when I was working at the high school level a few years ago, we did um, books. So these are fold out books on global issues. They were able to pick their own issue of concern. Um, the one on the left was just about um, love and acceptance. Um, I think this person was really concerned about how all people are accepted. And the one on the right was more about endangered animals because that student um, was really into animals, but the artwork came out really great. And there's all different kinds of ways that you can use the hexagon shape, right? So the flying pencil um, also stopped at HGMICS and my kiddos made hexagons and put them inside of that flying pencil, which actually made it to a few different spots um, globally and definitely in the US before it um, made its way home. We have also participated in a pen pal exchange program um, with Africa, and this is Alexander Kenneth um, from Uganda that I am going to be working with again this year. And so um, his children and my children were matched up and they each wrote a letter on one side of the hexagon and made artwork on the other side of the hexagon. And then um, Alexander and I exchanged those through the mail. And we had a really great day talking about um, the Ugandan culture. We listened to some of their music and watched some of their dances. And it was really a great opportunity for my kids to um, participate in such a program and learn about a completely different culture on the other side of the world. Um, so go ahead next. Um, so this year, um, this is one of my students participating and their work is on Art Sonia. Um, and we were utilizing the kindness um, theme, right? There have been many different themes throughout the year, but Art Sonia is really easy to use. And I myself have been using it for a few years now. So my kids are really, used to the format. Um, next, please. And these are the only hexagons that were published so far when I got to making the presentation, but I have another um, two groups right now that will be working with the hexagon project as well. And it's sort of crunch time for us at the end of the year. We have a lot going on between field trips and assemblies and um, this week upcoming, we're going to be really um, interrupted by the PSSAs, but we're still managing to fit in the hexagon project. And my, my kids actually really enjoy it. And we're moving into a, a, a tab um, creation format next year in our new art classroom. So I've been giving them little bits of choice here and there. So I really just give them the topic and the theme and they then are able to choose their materials that they feel like creating with. And so you might be able to see that some of my students used marker and some of them went with watercolor and um, just kind of whip these up because we often talk about yeah. kindness and the environment in different ways that um, we can help each other out at Howard Gardner. Okay, so I, I did talk a lot and um, some of my lesson plans and like I said, the math behind the hexagon, if you are interested in that, are all available on the website. Um, so please stop in and, and check out all of the resources available on there because there's a lot. Next is Lisa Temples and she is from Riverside and teaches ninth through 12th grade. Thanks, Melissa. Um, hi, I'm Lisa Temples. I'm the high school art teacher at Riverside Junior Senior High School in Taylor, Pennsylvania. I'm also currently an art ed grad student at Moore College of Art and Design. Um, 
I first got involved with the Hexagon Project about 13 years ago when I was teaching several uh, sections of eighth grade art. Here is an example of a collabor collaborative art in action project made by my eighth grade students. We went to see an assembly about a local animal rescue, Tracy's Hope. My students were particularly moved by the stories of animal abuse and I use this as my motivational hook to engage students to work in small groups and create these ceramic donation collection boxes. Several high school seniors working on their service hours placed the collection boxes in local businesses where patrons could place donations. These um, students monitored the boxes, brought them back to the school and promoted them on social media. We raised several hundred dollars in a short amount of time. Continuing the collaborative theme, here is an example of eighth grade, uh, eighth grade hexagon quilt. Students selected any interdependence topic they felt a connection with. And continuing the collaborative theme, here is an ex um, I'm sorry. Here are some examples of my current high school um, student work. I'm once again doing a collaborative quilt, and my students are selecting any social issue topic they feel passionate about. Uh, lastly, I am working with my art club members and art classes to put together an art in action coloring book, which we will print cut into the shape of a hexagon and use to create awareness for teen mental health issues, which have increased due to the pandemic. Uh, next, we have Ryan from West Scranton High School. Okay, I unmuted myself this time. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, great job, everybody. Um, these are some, I just put two images up here of uh, my first year at high school doing the Hexagon Project. And uh, I did make my entire class aware of the kindness theme, but I also left it very open for them to explore any topic that they want to uh, touch base on, um, such as the theme options that we saw earlier that Beth showed. And these are just some of the options, some of the hexagons um, that occurred in my class. And these hexagons actually were a really good tool to open up conversation with my students about certain topics, certain issues, and have those one-on-one -on -one conversations. Uh, and also, uh, I use this project as a great um, introduction to painting. So I took the hexagon template, uh, printed it onto um, cardstock, uh, paper, and then had the students uh, sketch ideas first, but then they uh, use this project to explore paint for the first time, mixing some colors um, and, uh, and playing with how that paint's going to be handled when they're applying it to a surface. With the size of the hexagon, um, it was the perfect intro painting project. Uh, and some students had um, acrylic and tempera paints. And then we also incorporated some marker as well into these different projects. Uh, for the timeline, it took us about a little over a week, week and a half to introduce the project, get the brainstorming, and then getting to the point where we had a finished product. Uh, a lot of students were able to open up conversations uh, through this project that we didn't talk about before and uh, with everything going on with COVID and everything in the past year it was a, a great little lesson to have uh, my high school high school students uh, open up more conversation with me and with their other peers in their class. Uh, this was just a taste and this was actually a super easy project implement and I'm still working on the Art Sonia part which the lovely Danielle Suma Fitz, Fitzmorris will, is not here today, but she uh, actually recorded a video. So on how to upload your hex and here she is. Oh, there we go. We're gonna play this. Just give it a second. Hi fellow art is. teachers, my name is Danielle and I'm excited to share with you a digital online art gallery called Art Sonia. Art Sonia is where you can upload your students artwork for the Hexagon project. 
the Hexagon Project decided to use this online platform, Artsonia, because granting parent permission can be done in a few different ways and quick, easy steps. Artsonia is compatible with other online learning systems such as Google. Artsonia is nice for collaborative work. And there's also a classroom mode in Artsonia through the Artsonia app. Classroom mode allows students to upload their own artwork, add their own titles, their own statements, and parents can also grant permission through this classroom mode as well. And most excitedly about Artsonia is there is potential to earn money for your art program. So before I show you how to make your own account, guide you through the tutorials in Artsonia, looking at the big picture, the most accessible way to use Artsonia is through the Artsonia app. Although you, if you only have a laptop, you can go on artsonia.com. Ryan, you're muted. And upload to the Artsonia Art Sony Gallery. Is that so better? Many choices that you have in doing this, and I'll show you how to get started. So here I am on Artsonia.com. To begin, scroll down to sign up for your account under teachers. Now I better log out so we can see what this looks like on. So now that we are under teachers, sign up for free. And it's very explanatory. Put in your zip code and your options of schools will come up. Choose your school. There may already be a teacher under that school from previous years. Add yourself to that school, connect yourself, add in your address, your phone number. Very explanatory, quick, easy process. Once you create your account or attach your name to your account, your school will get an email or a fax for them to recognize the school as a physical place and you will then have your own Artsonia account. So now that I am logged into my account, everybody wants to start at the teacher's guide. This is where you can click through to really understand more about Artsonia. After I'm in and I'm looking at the tutorials, the first thing I do at the beginning of every year or in your case now is I upload the spreadsheets of my students' names. So I go on to our learning management system. I get the Excel format of my students' names. I make sure it's in the format Artsonia needs. And then you can upload straight to Artsonia. They will create your students' screen names for you. So the most work you have to do in this is making sure that the list your students' rosters are in Excel form, the format they have here, and you get the files uploaded to Artsonia. After rosters are uploaded, screen names are created, you will create the projects. You will understand more how students can use Class Portal, how there can be feedback, comments, connecting parents, and if you use Google, Google Classroom is amazing. I do not use Google, and this platform still works great. So here I am, I'm logged in. You can see the integrated platforms and once your classes are uploaded, so you would go to import spreadsheets, choose the file and upload your students' rosters. After names are in, I'll go back. You can create classes and Artsonia will compile all of your students into the classes. Super easy. Then you want to create a project. It's very important to create the project because this is how students' artwork will be discovered. So let's say you do not have an account yet and you want to see how to see all of these digital hexagon projects. Just type in hexagon project. 2022. And this is what we have up so far for this year. So once you upload your students artwork, this is how their artwork will be recognized in searching the Hexagon Project 2022. 
So that being said, after you have your classes loaded, your student your student screen names created, go to projects, add project, name it hexagon, which I already have created, add project. You can do your description, media, but most importantly, assign. So I have all of these classes that I would assign all of these classes to this project. So now that your account is all set up, rosters, projects are created. I did all of this on artsonia.com. I now have my iPad screen mirrored. So to upload artwork, you can do this in a few different ways. Right now, I can log in as a teacher. Now that I'm on the Artsonia app, I'm logged in. If students are using the app, they would, of course, choose students. Parents could also access this. You would choose teacher. This way we can go and look at projects, rosters, but you would want to choose publish art. You can do batch publish. If you have 15 students, you probably can do this in 10 minutes or quick publish. So so choosing batch mode, selecting the camera, and you can quickly go through, use photo, use photo, and I just keep the photos in order. And now I did all three, pressing done, publish, and then you can go through, edit, choose the students to attach to the artwork. The second way to publish on the teacher's end is to choose quick publish. If you have to, you can crop it. Next, next, choose the student, attach it to Hexagon Project 2022, and then you can enter the title and statement. And most importantly, always remember remembering to publish. Now, the easiest way to publish is from the student's end. So I'm going to log out, go into student, and now they actually need the access code. My access code, is located at class portal and you will share your own access code with students. I actually have my access code on the classroom learning management system. Students just copy it, paste it, and then they can click on the link right to the classroom portal. So I'm logged in classroom portal, correct school. The student will look for their screen name They'll be able to see their previous artwork. Click Add Artwork, select the project. And this is all on the students and they can edit it, they can crop it, submit it, adding title, adding statement. And this is what is really nice to talk to your students about and really helping them create art statements. Art Sonia has a nice outline to follow as you see here. So we'll just quickly move through this step, submit and submit it for teacher to review. So on your end, you will go back into your class home screen under projects, clicking review. Now I have many projects to review. You will see mine at the bottom where you can fix title statements and approve or edit the student's work. As for a collaborative piece, if you want to add artwork as a collaborative piece, this is where you can choose a video or you can have the students individually photograph their artwork. And then when you get to the artist statement, 
everybody who is part of the art project, you can put in their art Sonia screen name. Remember under the parent permission, no last names can ever be shared. So now that students have their artwork uploaded, we can talk about parent permission. When you go into your home screen on Artsonia, you will see where you can print out an access code. For students to show their parents their artwork is already on there. So you can go to connect parents, share a school code, download, print out. Give each student a QR code. Students can show their parents the QR code. Parents can use their camera. Students have their device. Hold it over the QR code and what pops up are Sonia. This will direct parents. This is the school district. They will type their child's first name, last name, grade, email address, continue. It will come through on your end. To accept, permission is granted. Another quick way for parents to grant permission are a child knows how to log into their account. They show this to their parents. They show their parents their artwork. Click connect parent. Parent puts in their email, permission granted. Okay, so there's the basics of uploading your artwork, your students' artwork how to use the classroom mode in Artsonia. If you have any questions on how to use Artsonia, my name, my email is F-I-T-Z-M-O-D-A at W-A-L-L-E-N-P-A fitzmodic.org and you will also see a contact list of our other artists and our other teachers that you can reach out to. Thank you so much and good luck with Artsonia and Hexagon Projects and uploading artwork. Uh, thank you and then this is where we come to our questions and comments. Uh, uh part of our presentation um and this presentation just to remind everybody was brought to you by region nine of the pennsylvania art education art education association and uh does anybody have any questions i'm going to open the chat now to see if there are any questions i'm not too sure if we have any at this point i don't know if there's anything that anybody uh would like to make clear uh, from your presentation. Uh, uh, Beth, uh, how long has this been going on for the Hexagon project? Well, as I said, th uh, this is 16 years and um, we're hoping for good response. Um, I know we have people from many all over the world interested and a few states we also we have some uploads from uh, a school in Missouri already uh, and some other schools and you people have uploaded some things so we'll just it, it all starts to to come together right about now as uh, the school year, year ends um, we have a project that is uh, uh going on ongoing in a way um uh, uh for ukraine and if anyone is interested in um participating uh having your students uh send just send and create hexagons of of encouragement and empathy for the children in ukraine uh you can upload them onto artsonia under hexagon project 2022 Ukraine. Uh, there is a school in Wisconsin that's going to be doing that, and one in Florida I know of so far. Um, and I also have contacted uh, some uh, a teacher who is in Romania and is teaching some of the refugees from Ukraine. So you know, everything, I never know what's going to happen. <laughs> it just kind of comes together the last couple of months. 
and uh, you know, it's it's uh, unpredictable. But I hear from people all over, and uh, I, I, I do I do really appreciate that you're not demanding this project to be done in the fall time because we get hammered as art teachers that everybody wants things done in the fall. This is a great winter spring project uh, coming into the end of the year. So if you're a teacher out there listening to this, it's a great time to implement that uh, because then the, the, do, the deadline is usually the end of June, which kind of gives a lot more flexibility in the scheduling for other teachers. And uh, uh, Angela wrote in the comments that she appreciates the directions for Art Sonia. The best thing about Artsonia is the app. It is super easy to have the app open, uh, take a picture, then have the students right there with you, give you the title, give you the artist statement, and you type it all in there and it's right up. The only thing that uh, for my first year doing, I still haven't gotten all the uh, parent permissions yet, but I am working on that. So it's a, it's been actually very easy to use Artsonia and I'll hopefully be using it more in the future as well. Yeah, great. Uh, I wanted to thank Nicole. I see you put many of your, um, your links into the chat and that's, that looks great. That looks very helpful. And I think we'll be able to get the chat as a separate document to uh, print out, so that that that's excellent. Thank you, Nicole. Beth, can you put the Ukraine in the chat? That yeah, uh, yes, I can put up put that up. Um, At this time, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we'll field any questions and comments uh, by hopefully seeing our faces. And Nicole, Melissa, and Lisa, uh, is there any particular time of year that you actually implement this project or are you guys? Uh, uh, lean towards the spring as well. Yeah, I lean towards the spring, definitely. Um, just just getting the kids like, you know, getting through all the routines of the year and all the other things that need to come cover. And I drop seeds like, um, I think Nicole, you said with your younger students, you drop like seeds. I do that too. We do a lot of um, stuff in our journal about different issues and kindness and things like that. And then I try to get them to come up with something, you know, grand at the end <laughs> and hopefully original i tried not to show too many artwork examples oh, absolutely due to that That's reason my, yeah. a lot of my little kids were drawing the skateboard example from the life fest video and i was like oh so for the older kids i'm like nothing from the video yeah. <laughs> your own life <laughs> something you've done something somebody's done for you <laughs> so we went through a lot of discussion to brainstorm you know all the different ideas from their own life but it yeah. worked out yeah, it, it always takes a bit of that, you know, uh, to have students uh, understand the concepts and they're not easy. I mean, it does take some some thought and conversation and motivation on teachers' parts to get students to uh, see see things and see how they're connected. And I, there's, a, there's a teacher in Australia who is an elementary school and she always talks about she t tells her students the worldwide hexagon project like she makes it seem so special to them and and, and you know when they think about like this is going to be this is a worldwide project and it's it's i'm making this so it's so people can see it from all over um i i just made a contact with um uh an iranian refugee uh, there's a, a website called Love Without Borders um, for Refugees um, dot com, I think, uh, and it's based in um, Greece. And he's a refugee from uh, in in Greece from Iran. And they're going to create. They're going to have a, a hexagon workshop 
on May 7th uh, in, in Athens, Greece uh, of refugees. And uh, Love Without Borders encourages any refugees who have art talent to create their art. So they're gonna pair up people who aren't necessarily artists with these uh, refugees who are artists and create these hexagons together. So I'm going to help facilitate that through Zoom, which is something we couldn't do until you know very recently uh, because of the pandemic. We can go all over the world and do amazing things together. So um, I'm interested in seeing how that's going to work out. And um, you know, it just there's so many interesting ways and and avenues that the Hexagon Project uh, presents itself. You know, we've had. Uh, pen pals in uh, between um, Washington State students and Japan, uh, a teacher who teaches English language in Japan uh, uh, creates a pen pal project with English speaking students in the United States. So, and that Uganda project that you're doing is, is, a, is a really something like that also, uh, Melissa. And I'm so excited and I'm so proud of all of you <laughs> for participating and uh, having the depth and getting those kids to uh, think and create about social justice issues. I think the idea of choice is very good. Uh, and uh, like you do, you've done, Ryan. And uh, I wanted to mention also that um, we have a chapter coming out in, in, uh, in an INSEA publication um, I don't know if I have the title of it exact, but um, uh, Lisa's uh, project, the ceramic uh, hexagon donation canisters is in it. And uh, another one from uh, Wilkes-Barre area, a, the, the science teacher in high school is actually uh, did a project with EPC AMR, the um, uh, acid mine reclamation project and uh, as I said, she's the science teacher, but she also loves art. And so these high school students uh, made hexagons about reclaiming the regional um, the, uh, stream, a uh, one stream that they focused on. And they went out and did uh, uh, photographs and explored the stream and saw the damage that our acid mines have done in, in uh, Pennsylvania. So those are going to be published in Pictures of Practice in an INSEA um, publication that we've been working on for about a year now. And uh, uh, it's, it's been a labor of love for sure for, for all of us to write and rewrite and send in photographs. And it should be a, a very exciting, it will be a, um, an international look at teachers who are doing things is not theory, it's putting the theory into practice. And so uh, we look forward to having that come out too fairly soon. Beth, uh, what's NCIA? What's it stand for? Oh, uh, NCIA is the International Society for Education Through Art. And it's affiliated with NAEA and uh, you can belong to it. And uh, it's, um, uh, made up of, of teachers who are teaching, um, PhD candidates, uh, uh, you know, teachers who are teaching in colleges and universities. Very exciting, uh, interesting uh, organization. It started at, after World War II uh, to uh, the purpose of it is to uh, preserve and continue uh, children's artwork and to protect it and to make sure that the world never um, uh, denies children the right to be creative and express themselves. And um, it has that long history and it's still ongoing. And, and yeah, if you get a chance to see some of the things that are happening in NCIA or join it, uh, it's, it's a very wonderful organization and in, it, it's broken down into chapters and regions. So uh, Melissa actually did present for us for the Hexagon Project in UCIA, which is the United States Society for Education through Art a couple of years ago. I sent her on the plane to, <laughs> to present for us and she did a great job. Yeah, it was a good experience. So the Hexagon Project does all kinds of interesting things like that. We uh, were like, 
a kind of a family. So, um, yeah, so we, um, that's the Hexagon Project. And we're hoping that we have many more participants this year. And uh, as I said, the regional show, well, Eastern Regional Show will open uh, the first Friday in September, which I think is the third in Scranton. But that's not the only regional shows that we've ever had. If you go on our website, we have blog about a lot of things that have happened with the Hexagon Project over the years, uh, things that are also upcoming. And we have a newsletter and, um, and there's a lot of exciting projects and connections that we're, we're currently making or we have made that you can see um, the, the depth and the breadth of the project. So we're very honored to be uh, being published in uh, that international society's um, publications also. Spread the word, yeah. Awesome, thank you so much, Beth. Uh, I really uh, appreciate this project even more after, I apologize for not doing and participating soon. <laughs> uh, I've only asked you for it, about six or seven years. <laughs> eight, eight, uh, but we're there now and I will be there every year from now. Uh, Nicole also put in uh, the links for INSEA and UCEA. So thank, thank you, Nicole, you. for putting that in there. And thank I you. want to thank Jill Anders, who are, is our PAEA rep, for helping this webinar come together. And Nicole, Melissa, Lisa, and Danielle, and especially Beth, thank you for helping uh, to create a great Region 9 webinar. Uh, the arts are really thriving up here in Northeast PA, and we hope to share uh, the Hexagon Project with Pennsylvania and the rest of the world. Thank you again, Beth. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you all for having us in the webinar. We're so thrilled to be here. Yes, and thank you everyone for such great information about the Hexagon Project and be willing and being willing to share it with all of PAEA. So please make sure that everyone has signed in on the chat roll. Make sure that you are checking your email for the Act 48 link coming soon. And we do hope that everybody enjoyed their time with us tonight. And unless there are any other questions, then I guess that's a wrap. So thank you again, and everybody have a good night. Well, thank, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you all so very much. <laughs>